Hi, I'm James McGuire, and I'm here with Manasi Vartok, Chief AI Architect at Cloudera. Manasi, really good to see you today, and I hope you're keeping up with all the uh, the buzz at the event today. Yes, thanks for having me. It's a fantastic <laughs> event with so many key customers, partners. Uh, it's really, the energy is amazing. A lot, lot of buzz going on, for sure. You know, you said something really interesting in the keynote today. I really got a kick out of it, but I think it's also really interesting, really insightful that you said if, if generative AI was a, was a cat, we, uh, it would be a two-year-old kitten. I thought, you know, that is all too true. Of course, kittens are notoriously untrainable. Uh, and so I guess perhaps if I extend the metaphor, maybe you're saying generative AI is not easy to train. Am I correct in thinking that? Um, so the, the analogy came about because we were talking about how many uh, POCs are making their way to production. And there's a number going around is like, oh, maybe 95% aren't going, uh, aren't making their way to production. And this right. was, a quick analogy in terms of uh, to describe how early we are in the space. Like Gen AI, ChatGPT was launched three years ago, you know, sure. less than. 2022. And so, exactly, um, the end of 2022. And we're expecting a lot from a technology that's so early. Um, and that's where like, oh, it's a three-year-old kid. And if you, you, know, you need to give it right. time to right. like figure out what, um, what it's good at or not. And I think for enterprises, what that means is you need to experiment with this technology, see where it works, where it doesn't, what are the failure modes, and then build from it. And I don't think we should be looking at the fact that not many of these uh, pilots go into production as necessarily a bad thing, because it is so new. Right, right. If right. you think about like digital transformation, that's been around 20 years. Sure, that's like, a, that's we're a still doing that. <laughs> very established term, no, and it, it's still evolving. Mm -hmm. Right. Exactly. Um, well, then the question becomes that if there's this new creature, there's this mm -hmm. new adorable kitty, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Uh, and companies are kind of frustrated. They know it's very powerful. It's going to yeah. be quite the quite the, the lion someday. <laughs> um, to really really belabor the metaphor, but how how do companies really get value from that? Because like there is a sense of frustration that we want to be on board. We're not sure we're getting real value from this. Yes, yes. Um, I think the answer has a lot of pieces. So I'll maybe touch please, upon a few please. of them. Yeah. Um, I think one is the easier one is it is experimentation. You do need to get familiar with where does Gen AI work? Where do agents work? Mm -hmm. Where do they not work? Um, so that's one piece. The second piece is typically um, figuring out if your data is ready mm. to be integrated mm -hmm. into generative AI. Because LLMs these days know everything about the public internet. Right. They know nothing about your enterprise context. So where is your HR data? Where is your um, customer data, legal data? So that's very unclear. Mm -hmm. um, and so uh, that's the other next thing to figure out is do we have a data architecture in place? Uh -huh. um, and then picking use cases that have high ROI right. and are accessible to Gen AI. So I think a lot of the success really is driven by um, where are we, what kind of use cases? And some of the examples are if you're doing code generation, that's uh -huh. well established, that's one that you can show you know, very quick wins with, sure. perhaps go there. Um, there are other areas like document searching, like you might want to search your support documents. Um, right. That's also another area, like legal document search. Sure. So a framework that might help um, is to think about horizontal applications, hmm. um, which might be your general purpose chatbots like uh -huh. GPT, Gemini, and then there are vertical specific applications. And the verticals are likely to drive higher ROI um, uh -huh. versus like, hey, this is just a regular assistant. Um, so that's another thing the, to consider. The targeted vertical is going to have more yes. ROI. Yes. Makes perfect sense. Yes. Yes. All right. Well, if we zoom out from AI itself to, to Cloudera, mm -hmm. really the question is, what is the company's true North Star going forward, say, next 12, 18 months? And, and how will the company differentiate itself from the hyperscalers and the other lake house rivals? Yes. Great question. Um, so Cloudera's niche has been in getting data, um, wherever your data resides, we can process it, whether it's on-prem, whether it's at the edge, whether it's on the cloud. Now, what we're doing with AI is we're getting the AI to the data wherever it resides. Okay. Um, which means if you if it's residing on prem because you're in Asia Pacific and that data cannot leave the data center in Asia Pacific, we will run it there. That might mean that for your America's customers, mm -hmm. it's residing in AWS. Maybe in the Middle East, it's residing GCP. So our unique perspective is we get the AI to wherever your data lives uh -huh. in whatever cloud or in whatever hybrid setting. 
Um, and that's really where we're leaning in with even Taiken acquisition. So it's not moving the data, it's, it's moving the AI to the data. Yes, uh -huh. and you want to do that for a few reasons. One is it's expensive to move data, sure. like for petabytes, exabytes. Right. Second, um, regulation might not let you do that right. because certain geos have restrictions. And third one, it's a better user experience. If you start like shipping your data from Southeast Asia to the U.S., right. the latency incurred is going to be so large that your people are your customers are going to be like. Why isn't this chatbot responding to me? Yes. So that's, those are, I think, the three things why it makes a lot of sense to do that. Uh huh. Okay. Well, what would you say to some theoretical CIO who said, Manasi, you know, we need to invest more in AI. We're confused. We don't know. We're spending too much. You know, how do we keep our costs down? Please help us. What, what, what would you say to that person? Um, come work for Cloudera. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, you would actually give that pitch. I would, just because I think there's a few things. And I think, Technology is only one part of the story. Okay. Um, the You want to start with the business. Is If you are trying to leverage AI, what are the use cases where AI can be most effectively applied? Now, our field teams and PS uh, professional services teams do a lot of these engagements where we do workshops and we identify what are the use cases that make sense that will drive You go into a company and, and you check with their use cases? Or what you, yes. Oh, okay. So we will do workshops, Jen AI or agents workshops to understand use cases and then okay. help them triage, like, okay, this one would be high ROI. Um, this is the kind of data you need. And do you have that data ready? Right. Um, those kinds of questions. And then for people who are operating at scale, you actually want to be running your models on-prem. So uh -huh. this was in the keynote where uh, one of our case studies demonstrated that if you're over 100 models and not even LLMs, like regular models, if right. you're more than 100, it's actually cheaper to run them on-prem. Uh -huh. And so there is a... Uh, depending on the space of um, the complexity of your workloads, the number of workloads, it can actually be cheaper to be running some of these on-prem. So that's another way to control costs. Well, one question about that. It seems like it may, there may be some conventional wisdom out there that says, well, I, there's all these cloud providers and they have these big, big you know, stores, so to speak, of, of, of large language models, and they've got hundreds to choose from it. So you know, choose our LLMs, but of course, I guess they're residing on their platforms. You're saying that the LLMs need to reside internally. Um, so I think reside, LLMs residing internally is really for data privacy reasons. Okay. Um, right now, OpenAI and others are, um, I would say, they are subsidizing our, you know, our use of LLMs right. uh, quite a bit. Uh -huh. And so if you wanted to train your own models or fine tune your own models and run them, it's actually cheaper to be doing that on your data centers, for okay. example. Yep. And that's also why, you know, OpenAI is spending so much in data centers, if you think about it, right? Of course. They don't want to necessarily spend that money on cloud, because uh, and they can get the best deals, to be clear. Sure, <laughs> sure, of course. Yeah. Well, all right, another big topic these days is the idea of AI, um, AI ethics. And it's, a, it's a sort of a sort of spot. I mean, I, I think some, some companies are, are rushing to profit, and so the idea of ethics is a fine point that can be left behind a little bit. Yeah. Um, it's a bit, so what, what is your sense of AI ethics? Where are we going? What do we need to be thinking about? Yeah, I think AI ethics is super multifaceted. And it was sure. with Gen AI, it adds a whole other layer to it. Um, mm. So putting the enterprise context aside, when chatbots start being used, say, for um, mental health reasons, right. like that is such a ethically fraud problem. Very because sensitive. on the one hand, more people need mental health. On the other hand, we've seen significant sort of damage to life because yes. of these chatbots. So that's where it's, it's very use case specific. But if we come back to enterprise where maybe ethics is, should I be using AI on this particular use case? Uh -huh. It could also be, am I providing biased output yes. um, for something? So I think there's a lot of facets and depending on the use case, questions are gonna vary. Is there a use case where someone should say, you know what, I shouldn't be using AI for this use case? I think there might be, and I think the mental health one is, yeah. a, is a really interesting yeah. one because um, I think we're seeing too many examples of where um, we don't have the right guardrails mm -hmm. on GPT. Mm -hmm. um, and so places where, or it might be examples where it's AI for directed towards children. Uh, now, right. if, I, if you think about regular technology and you're like, if someone is under 13, what kind of guardrails do you use? Yes. Similarly, 
how do you apply bring AI into that discussion? Right. Should they be using AI enabled applications? If so, how? Mm -hmm. So I think there's a lot of specific areas. Similarly, if you think about vulnerable populations generally, sure. younger people, older adults, maybe folks with um, health disorders, I think all of those, we need to think deeply about whether AI, the trade-offs, the benefits outweigh the risks mm -hmm. of using AI there. Um, yeah. yeah. I, on a related topic, the idea of responsible AI in the enterprise, mm -hmm. somewhat mm -hmm. it's related but somewhat different. I mean, yeah. it's about trust, it's about data privacy also. Yes. yes. What do you say to enterprises? They're, they're very concerned about re responsible AI. Yes. I think for enterprises, that's a really, um, that's a really important consideration mm -hmm. because, and it's also a more sort of well-defined problem versus right. say AI ethics, right? For responsible AI, you want to be thinking about Am I using the data that I'm using? Should I be using it for this particular application? For instance, like if you're a loan provider, should you be using healthcare data? That right. might be illegal. Right. So um, right. that's kind of the, the data that goes into the model. Mm -hmm. Then we have things like bias, where are you treating two people from different uh, groups the same way? Yes. Um, so I think bias is also a pretty critical one, especially if you're making key life decisions like loans and sure. credit cards and things like that. Yeah. Monsi, I think you said it. A lot of interesting stuff. Uh, please come back and talk to us again sometime. That was great. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah.